So this year's Qualcomm Tech Summit's happening, and that means there's a new Snapdragon chip. This year, Qualcomm's calling it the Snapdragon 888, which is a little bit confusing considering we had 865 and 855 before it. No, they're completely skipping 875. They're going straight to 888 for some reason. Anyway, I figured that you guys would want to know what the top five features of the Snapdragon 888 is, just so you can kind of prepare for what you can expect to see in 2021. So kicking things off, and I think probably what most of you want to know about is performance. Now, one big thing to know about the Snapdragon 888 is that it's using a five nanometer process node. That's down from the seven nanometer process node in last year's model. And that pretty much puts it on par with all the other SOC manufacturers like Apple, Samsung, and Huawei. They're all now using five nanometer process nodes. Now there's a lot of advantages to this. One, the density of the transistors can be a lot more tight, which means more performance and less power usage. So you can expect to see both of those things in the Snapdragon 888. Just on the CPU side, Qualcomm's quoting a 25% performance increase over the 865, which was already pretty fast. So this thing should probably fly. And like I said earlier, it's going to use less power while doing this, which is pretty impressive. All right, second off is GPU and gaming performance. And this year it seems like Qualcomm really went all in on the gaming side of things. They're quoting a 35% increase in GPU performance with a 20% battery increase on the GPU itself, which means you can game for longer and have better fidelity while you're doing it. Qualcomm is really going all in on gaming this year and is adding a bunch of new features like Qualcomm Quick Touch, which allows for lower latency between when you touch the display and when something happens on your screen. And it's also doing things like sub pixel rendering to allow for better graphics in games. It's really pushing the limits of what you can do with a mobile GPU. All right, the third major thing here is 5G. And I know that we're all really tired of hearing about 5G, but the big thing related to 5G this year is that Qualcomm was actually able to shift the 5G modem onto the SoC itself. And this is really useful for a number of reasons. One, it saves space. So a manufacturer can add a bigger battery or other components where they normally would have to put the 5G modem. Two, it uses less power because it gets moved directly onto the chip and all this power can move around a lot more efficiently. And three, hopefully the chip will be able to be a little bit cheaper because you don't have to buy separate components and change the motherboard and move things around. Overall, this is a very big deal. Number four is a pretty big update to AI and machine learning capabilities on the Snapdragon 888. Qualcomm actually fused its machine learning cores together this year, which allows for up to three times the performance at the same power usage. This basically means that when you're doing things like using Snapchat filters or Instagram filters or any other thing that uses AI or machine learning on your phone, that's gonna use a lot less power and it's gonna work a lot faster. And considering a lot of AI and machine learning tasks are becoming more and more important over time on our phones, that's a very good thing. So the last major thing, and I think the thing that a lot of you are gonna care about in the Snapdragon 888 is the camera. Now, the main thing to know here is that Qualcomm added a third image signal processor to the 888, and that enables quite a few things. One, you can either record from three cameras at the exact same time. So if you wanted to record like a wide angle view, a standard view, and a telephoto view, you could do that all at the same time. Or alternatively, you could pipe all of that data into one single camera, which allows for 2.7 gigapixels per second of data throughput. Now that allows for a lot of things. You can record 120 FPS 4K video now, which is crazy and really nice because then you can actually watch that video back on your 120 Hertz display. Or alternatively, you can take 120 12 megapixel photos in one second through burst mode. So there's a lot of new features coming to this camera. But Qualcomm also enabled something in the 888 called computational HDR video. And this is very different from traditional HDR video like HDR10 or Dolby Vision HDR, which kind of defines a color space and a brightness that that phone can achieve. Instead, this is a lot more similar to how HDR photos work, where it exposes for the highlights, the shadows, and the middle of the scene, and then it kind of stitches that all together to make one single image. Qualcomm can actually do this in video now at 4K 30 FPS. And technically it can do it at 4K 60 FPS, but they're recommending 4K 30 FPS for now. But this is gonna be really cool because it's going to enable you to capture a lot more of those highlights while also getting the shadow detail in your video. This is really gonna help people like Google who have not really traditionally worked on video that much. 
If you want a lot more info on what's new with the camera, make sure you read my deep dive article that I did over at AndroidAuthority.com. And we've also got more deep dives on pretty much all of the topics that I listed today, so make sure you go read those as well. Anyways, guys, that's been about it. Make sure you stay tuned to Android Authority. We've got a lot more coming. And what phone are you most excited for in 2021 that's gonna sport the Snapdragon 888? Let me know, and I'll catch you in the next video.